We told you that Asia closed up a very, very weak session for itself and Europe as well has opened on a disappointing note. The Dow Futures, of course, has also been promising a tough start when it does open up. So what's been happening across the global sphere to cause this much nervousness? Robert Parker of Credit Suisse joins in to talk about that. Robert, good to have you on the show. What exactly do you think has been the catalyst for the sharp sell-off in global markets today? Well, I think three factors. The first factor is let's not forget that um, we had a very strong market over the last two weeks. And for example, last week, you know, we had the S&P up um, over 6%. Um, and then in Europe, um, you know, most markets were up um, close to 2%. So I think the first is that there is an element of profit taking going on. I think the second element is obviously we have had uh, the chief executives of uh, General Motors in the States uh, and Peugeot here in uh, Europe uh, both being replaced. And I think there is genuine concern, which obviously is not new, uh, that we may finally have to see General Motors and Chrysler uh, go into Chapter 11 administration or a variant of that. Um, and then the third factor, of course, is statements from Treasury Secretary Geithner in the States uh, saying, um, and he wasn't actually all that detailed in the statement, uh, but suggesting that further large amounts uh, of support will be required for the American banking system. So that's resulted in, in a sell-off essentially focused on the auto sector uh, and on the banking sector. Mm. Robert, afternoon. Uh, there was also a comment from Bank of America uh, over the weekend uh, suggesting that while January and February were profitable for the U.S. banks, large banks, March was not such a good month. Do you think fi the financial sector might have taken some negative tones out of that? Um, I think possibly. Um, now, obviously, um, <laughs> one question is to what extent banks such as Bank of America um, are going to be taking write-downs uh, during March for their quarter end. Now, we will get uh, the bank and, you know, other company results for the first quarter uh, to be announced in late April and early May. Um, and I think a general observation is the corporate earnings results probably are not going to see a significant turnaround for the first quarter. Um, I suspect any corporate earnings turnaround is going to be much later in the year. Um, and that's why we've been slightly nervous about uh, this equity market rally extending into late April and early May. And I think that mm -hmm. could be a period of weakness. Uh, if you look at, back, coming back to the Bank of America statement, uh, if you look at default rates um, in the States, I would argue that default rates are only rising very slightly in uh, investment grade uh, credits. Um, and I don't see much of a dramatic increase in default rates in areas like uh, credit cards or student loans or consumer loans. Uh, where we are seeing big write-offs is obviously in the high-yield bond market, um, and we're seeing major further write-downs, obviously, on, uh, on private equity. Mm. So do you think what's going on over the last couple of days in global equity markets uh, should be read as the end or the termination of this uh, relief rally, or do you think it's just a pullback from uh, the relief that we've had for the last two weeks? No more. Um, I think inevitably we have this week got a technical reaction backed up by uh, some signs of bad news in the auto and banking sector. Um, I do think that this technical reaction could extend for most of this week, possibly going into next week. Um, however, I think that the probability of us going back to the low levels that we saw in the first week of March and the end of February is quite low. And I think the pattern for the next few months is limited downside risk on trend in global equities. But we are going to have sharp rallies then, you know, those sharp rallies then meeting quite a lot of resistance as we are seeing today. So it's going to be there's a ratchet effect in markets over the coming months. Till last week, Robert, it didn't seem like a great idea to be sitting on high cash levels. In fact, we heard that risk aversion was easing up. People were willing to deploy more money. If indeed markets come off a little bit because they've run very hard these past 10 days, do you sense that money might start coming back to the market? Or do you think they're basically going to start sitting on their hands again because the outlook seems more nervous again? Well, I think you've got a number of key factors um, which need to be fulfilled for a sustained rally. Um, and I would say, number one, it's, it's evidence 
the, the problems in the global banking system and particularly the American banking system, um, those are easing off. And I think we'll only get evidence of that probably during um, the summer months. I doubt if we're going to get evidence of that. Uh, when they announce results at the end of April, beginning of May. Secondly, is obviously evidence that the global economy is starting to pick up. And we've got, you know, one or two initial bits of economic data. Um, For example, if you look at the ISM non-manufacturing index, and if you look at purchasing managers' indices, uh, there is evidence that we're not out of recession in America, Europe, or Japan, but that the pace of recession is easing off, i.e. that the global economy is starting to form a base, and I think that that will become clearer in certain Asian economies, notably China and the States, um, towards the end of the second quarter and going into the third quarter. Um, I think the third factor um, is obviously when do we get an improvement in corporate earnings growth? Um, I think that's going to be later in the year, but don't forget that historically in bear markets, uh, equity markets tend to discount on average six months forward before an improvement in corporate earnings growth. And that's why I think the pattern in equity markets is going to be, if you, as I described earlier, this ratchet. Uh, but I do think that uh, on any market setback, these very high cash levels that we are seeing being held by investors you'll see investors come in and buy on weakness rather than what we saw last year, which was obviously sell on strength. Robert Parker, we do appreciate you joining in this afternoon. That's the Credit Suisse view saying that perhaps the second half of this month may not be that strong and maybe this is what we'll have to live with. Sharp runs up and then sharp runs down as well. But here's